The Seven Fires Prophecies of the Anishinaabe. The first prophet said to the people, in the time of the first fire, the Anishinaabe nation will rise up and follow the sacred shell of the Midewiwin Lodge. The Midewiwin Lodge will serve as a rallying point to the people, and in its traditional ways will be the source of much strength. The sacred magis will lead the way to the chosen ground of the Anishinaabe. You are to look for the turtle-shaped island that is linked to the purification of the earth. You will find such an island at the beginning and the end of your journey. There will be seven stopping places along the way. You will know the chosen ground has been reached when you come to the land where the food grows on water. If you do not move, you will be destroyed. The second prophet told the people, you will know the second fire because at this time the nation will be camped by a large body of water. In this time the direction of the sacred shell will be lost. The Midewiwin will diminish in strength. A boy will be born to point the way back to the traditional ways. He will show you the direction to the stepping stones to the future of the Anishinaabe people. The third prophet said to the people, in the third fire, the Anishinaabe will find the path to the chosen ground, a land to the west, which they must move their families. There will be the land where the food grows on water. The fourth fire was given to the people by two prophets. They come as one. They told of the coming of the light-skinned race. One of the prophets said, you will know the future of our people by the face of the light-skinned race. If they come wearing the face of brotherhood, then there will come a time of wonderful change for generations to come. They will bring new knowledge and articles that can be joined with the knowledge of this country. In this way, two nations will join and make one mighty nation. The new nation will be joined by two or more, so that four will form by the mightiest nation of all. You will know the face of brotherhood if the light-skinned race comes carrying no weapons if they come bearing only their knowledge and a shake of hand. The other prophet said, beware of the light-skinned race, comes wearing the face of death. You must be careful because the face of brotherhood and the face of death look very much alike. If they come carrying a weapon, beware. If they come in suffering, they could fool you. Their hearts may be filled with greed for the riches of this land. If they are indeed your brothers, let them prove it. Do not accept them in total trust. You shall know the face they wear as one of death. If the rivers run with poison and the fish become unfit to eat, you shall know them by these many things. The fifth prophet said, in the time of the fifth fire, there will come a time of great struggle that will grip the lives of all Indian people. At the warning of this fire will come among the people one who holds the promise of great joy and salvation. If the people accept this promise of a new way and abandon the old teachings, then the struggle of the fifth fire will be one with the people of many generations. The promise that comes will prove to be a false promise. All those who accept the promise will cause their near destruction of their people. The prophet of the sixth fire said, in the time of the sixth fire, it will be evident that the promise of the fifth fire came in a false way. Those deceived by this promise will take their children away from the teachings of their elders. Grandsons and granddaughters will turn against the elders. In this way, the elders will lose their reason for living. They will lose their purpose in life. At this time, a new sickness will come among the people. The balance of many people will be disturbed. The cup of life will be almost spilled. The cup of life will almost become a cup of grief. At this time, these predictions may be scoffed at by the prophets. Then the medicines to keep away sickness. They were healthy and happy as a people. They were the people who chose to stay behind in the great migration of the Anishinaabe. These people were the first to have contact with the light-skinned race. They would suffer the most. When the fifth fire came to pass, a great struggle did indeed grip the lives of all Indian people. The light-skinned race launched a military attack on the Indian people throughout the country, aimed at taking away their land and independence as a free and sovereign people. 
it is now felt that the false promise that came to end the fifth fire was the materials and riches embodied in the way of life of the light-skinned race. Those who abandoned the ancient ways and accepted this new promise were a big factor in causing the near destruction of the Indian people of this land. When the sixth fire came to be, the words of the prophet rang true as the children were taken away from the teachings of their elders. The boarding school era of civilizing Indian children had begun. The Indian language and religion were taken from the children. They started dying at an early age. They almost lost their will to live and their purpose for living. In the confusing times of the Sixth Fire, it is said that a group of visionaries came among the Anishinaabe. They gathered all the priests of the Midewiwin Lodge. They told the priests of the Midewiwin Way was in danger of being destroyed. They gathered all the sacred bundles. They gathered all the scrolls that recorded the ceremonies. All these things were placed into a hollowed out log from the ironwood tree. Men were lowered over a cliff by long ropes. They dug a hole in the cliff and they buried the log where no one could find it. Thus the teachings of the elders were hidden out of sight, but not out of memory. It was said that when the time came that the Indian people could practice their religion without fear, that a little boy would dream of the ironwood log full of the sacred bundles and the scrolls were buried and the young boy would lead his people to that place. The seventh prophet that came to the people long ago was said to be different from the other prophets. He was young. He had a strange light in his eyes. He said in the time of the seventh fire, new people will emerge. They will retrace their steps to find what is left by the trail. Their steps will take them to the elders and they will ask them to guide them on their journey but many of the elders will have fallen asleep. They will awaken to this new time with nothing to offer. Some of the elders will be silent out of fear. Some of the elders will be silent because no one will ask anything of them. New people will have to be careful in how they approach the elders. The task of the new people will not be easy. If the new people will remain strong in their quest, the water drum of the Widdiwiwin Lodge will again sound its voice. There will be a rebirth of the Anishinaabe nation and a rekindling of the old flames. The sacred fire will again be lit. It is at this time that the light-skinned race will be given a choice between the two roads. If they choose the right road, then the seventh fire will light the eighth and final fire, an eternal fire of peace, love and brotherhood and sisterhood. If the light-skinned race makes the wrong choice of roads, the destruction of which brought them in the coming in this country will come back at them and will cause much suffering and death to all of the Earth's people. Traditional Mide people from other nations have interpreted the two roads that face the light-skinned race as the road to technology and the other to spiritualism. They feel that the road to technology represents a continual of headlong rush into technological development. This is the road that has led to modern society, to a damaged and seared earth. Could it be that the road to technology represents a rush to its own destruction? The road to spirituality represents, however, the slower path to the traditional Indian people have traveled and are now seeking again. The earth is not scorched on this trail. The grass is still growing there. The prophet of the fourth fire spoke of a time when two nations would join and make a mighty nation. He was speaking of the coming of the light-skinned race and the face of brotherhood the light-skinned brother could have been wearing. It is obvious from history of this country that that was not the face worn by the light-skinned race as a whole. The mighty nation spoken of in the fourth fire has never been formed. If the natural people of the earth could just wear the face of brotherhood, we might be able to deliver our society from the road of destruction. Could we take the two roads, then maybe they represent the two clashing worldviews come together to form a mighty nation? Or could a nation be formed that is guided by respect for all living things? And the question is, are we the new people of the seventh fire?